Thank you very much indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and a very warm welcome to this special international edition of Pointless Celebrities, the show where the aim of the game is to score as few points as you can. You do that by coming up with the answers no one else could think of. Let's meet today's Pointless Celebrities. <laughs> Couple number one. I am Nancy Lamb. I cook, but I don't spoil the cook. And I'm Sam Simmons. I'm an Australian idiot. <laughs> Couple number two. I'm Guillermo Balaguer, member of uh, Sky Sports coverage of Spanish football for 19 years, and I write some books. I'm Ossi Ardiles, a football player. Uh, well, I used to be one. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Kim Mazzell. I'm the first lady of house music. House music all night long? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm Jimmy Osmond. I'm the youngest member of a pop band that's been around a while called The Osmonds. And finally, couple number four. He's Johnny from Jedward. I'm Edward, and I'm in the group Jedward. We're best friends, and we're here on Pointers for the third time. And the theme was Hollywood, so we, like, got some bling bling. She's got her bling. <laughs> you got your red, you got your suits. We're all ready. Let's go. Thank you very much indeed. All of you are very warm. Welcome to Pointless. And we'll get to chat to each of you throughout the show as it goes along. So that just leaves one more person for me to introduce. A man with a brain the size of the Central African Republic. And by brain, we mean a cranial organ that's recognised by the United Nations Board of Surgeons. <laughs> it's my Pointless friend. It's Richard. Hi, uh, hey, everybody. Good evening. Uh, Good evening to you. Good evening. This is like the most surreal dinner party anyone has ever had. <laughs> Don't you think? You're lovely, even had the though. Food yet? Uh, wonderful oh. to have John and Edward back on again. One of my life's ambitions is to get Jedward past round one on this show. Yes, <laughs> it's, it's my never... ambition as well. Because I feel like it's like the sequels in movies. I like there's one, two, and three. But like, what's the? I don't think they come back. We're going to come back for a fourth. Maybe when we get really, really older. But yes, thanks for having us back. It's such a pleasure. Now, <laughs> yeah. Also on the show, I think I was just talking to him, Jimmy Osman. Now, my yeah. entire life, people have spelt my surname wrong. So I'm an Osman. Uh, the Osmonds are Osmonds. Uh, but we think somehow we must be related. We've he does look. Be related. He does look like some You're of my relatives. You're a bit taller than we are, though. Yeah, no, but there's more of you. So to stand one of you on, on the other <laughs> shoulders. And suddenly, stick, glass, stick Donny on your shoulders. Put glasses on him. Suddenly, you're thinking, hold on a minute. I do that sometimes. <laughs> But, yeah, listen, it's going to be a long evening, but a fun evening, I suspect. Lovely. Well, thank you very much. As usual, all of today's questions have been put to 100 people before the show. Our contestants here are looking for those all-important pointless answers. These are answers that none of our 100 people gave. Find one of those and we'll add £250 to the jackpot. Now, as today's show is a celebrity special and each of our celebrities is playing for a nominated charity, we're going to start off with a jackpot of £2,500. There we are. Right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. So remember this, the pair with the highest score at the end of each round will be eliminated, so keep those scores down if you can. No conferring till we get to the third round. Best of luck to all four pairs. Our first category this evening is film romance. Film romance. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns on-screen kisses. On-screen kisses, Richard. Mm. On each board, we're going to show you some pairs of actors who've shared famous on-screen kisses on film. You just need to tell us the name of the film in which these actors kissed, please. It's going to be 14 and all to have a go at home, so very best of luck. Thanks very much indeed. So we want the name of the film in which these pairs of actors kissed. And here is our first board of seven. We've got Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze, 1987. Kate Blanchett and Rooney Mara, 2015. Audrey Hepburn and George Peppard, 1961. Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio, 1997. Dev Patel and Frida Pinto, 2008. Tony Curtis and Marilyn Monroe, 1959. And Rene Zellweger and Colin Firth, 2001. I'll read those all again. Jennifer Grey and Patrick Swayze, 1987. Kate Blanchett and Rooney Mara, 2015. Audrey Hepburn and George Peppard, 1961. Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio, 1997. Dev Patel and Frida Pinto, 2008. Tony Curtis and Marilyn Monroe, 1959, and Rennie Zellweger and Colin Firth, 2001. Sam, welcome. Uh, OK. Good to have you here on Pointless. Thank you for having me. Um, now, Sam, before we get into that, yeah. just tell me, 
tell me about your... Because you're a comedian now, but you start off... You were a zookeeper. Yeah, I used to pick up uh, poo professionally. It was my what thing. What about that? <laughs> where, where did you do that? Uh, I was at Melbourne Zoo and Taronga Zoo in Sydney. And, uh, yeah... Oh, you was, went from I zoo to zoo? Dream. Yeah, I, I got around. And how do you then cross over into comedy? Or were you doing comedy well, all the while? Well, they used to stick me out in the paddock yeah. when, say, the elephant was off getting some footwork done, because they've got, like, bad feet. Elephants get bad feet, that's what happens. They'd be off display for a minute. They'd stick me out there with a headset microphone on. And then I'd pull apart elephant poos and, like, do little displays for the general public and go, hey, look, 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 in, look in here, kids, I found my car keys. Anyway, so then someone offered me a job in radio like an idiot, and now I don't know what I'm doing and where are we? What's going on here? <laughs> I don't know. Pointless, yeah. the best show in the Pointless. world. <laughs> uh, now, Sam. Yes. On the screen, kisses. What would you like to go for? Remember, nice, obscure, low-scoring answer is what you're after. So I think it's going to be Kate Blanchett and Rooney Mara. I think it was called Bridget. I think it was called, the film was called Bridget or Margaret or Molly. <laughs> it's just like a one, a one woman's name. Margaret, and I don't know. I don't know Nancy. I don't know Nancy. Nancy doesn't understand a word I'm saying. Do you have to take the first answer? I'm going to have to take your first answer, I'm afraid, Sam. All right, okay. I'm sorry. So, Bridget. Sam saying Bridget. I've got it wrong. For uh, Kate Blanchett and Rooney Mara. Let's see if it's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Bridget. Oh, I'm sorry, Sam. I'm sorry, not Bridget. Scores you 100 points. I'll tell you what, Sam. If we were going to have trouble with someone, I did not predict it was going to be you. (laughs) Uh, Not Bridget, I'm afraid. I'll give all the correct answers at the end of the pass. Thank you very much. Uh, Guillaume, great to have you here. Welcome to Pointed. And you're a, sort of, you're a football pundit extraordinaire. In the, I mean, you've written books, haven't you? You've written huge numbers of books. Uh, biographies? Who, who's have you written biographies? You know, Lionel Messi? You've Messi, Cristiano Ronaldo, Pep Guardiola. Uh, Dr Benitez, there... in a way, a book about Liverpool, so... Only the best. Only the best. Uh, I also read that you're, uh, you've got your, your coaching certificate, B... Yeah, B licence. You, you, you got your B licence. Always need a B licence. Yeah, well, absolutely. absolutely. If, you've got, if you've got an apiary, you're yeah. going to need a B licence. Yeah. <laughs> Allows you um, to enter a lot of bars. Um, but then you, you, you're going for the A licence. What's the difference between the uh, two? It's just, it just more hours of coaching, more understanding, and uh, it's it just really an excuse to uh, understand the, 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 the game I'm involved with as is a writer. It, as is a this because you want to understand it better, or is it because you're going to start a new career as a manager? I, I will be coaching... I run or help run a club called Beagles Ray United. That's right. Uh, and we've got uh, and the 14s and the 16s and the and the 12s. So I might get involved in that side a little bit, uh, which is, I think, the most fascinating thing I've ever done. Get involved with a football club. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, Guillaume, how are you finding this board of uh, of on-screen kisses? It'll be all right as long as I can say the name of the films in Spanish. Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, well, then I have to just go for Tony Cortes and Marilyn Monroe. Oh, no, that's the Sorry one I was that. going for. <laughs> uh, Some Like It Hot. Some Like It Hot, says Graham. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for that. Some Like It Hot. It's right. Well, the hundreds are high school, and you pass that very company, 40 for Some Like It Hot. Excellent film. All right. Very well played, Graham. Yeah, other than upsetting Jedward, uh, yeah, terrific answer. I actually um, have that movie, Some Like It Hot. I actually got the Marlon Monroe box set. I was about to ask whether you had that movie if you had a box set. <laughs> so thank you. Thanks very much. Kim, welcome to Pointless. Thank you. It's the, great to be here. Hello, everybody. Uh, the first <laughs> lady of house. The first lady of house. Now, movie. when did you get to be the first lady of house? When, when was that proclaimed? Well, that was proclaimed here by being signed as one of the first house artists, females, to a major label deal uh, worldwide in the UK, EMI Records for about a million dollars, something like this. Fantastic. Yeah. Now, you grew up in the same street as the Jacksons. I grew up on the, yeah, two doors down from Michael, no. Tito, Jermaine, LaToya, the Jacksons, yeah. That is incredible. You grew up alongside them. What was that street like? This street was full of music. I mean, you come outside and start to play as yeah. soon as you hear the guitars crank up. Yeah. So that was really, really good. Uh, and it influenced me to go into music. I saw him leave down the street and go into the TV. So as a little kid, I thought, I want to leave from the house and go into the TV. So now I'm in the TV. <laughs> <laughs> now you're in the TV. Now, Kim, what would you like to go for on this board? Um, well, they did pick the one that I had my eye on, which was uh, Some Like It Hot. But um, Patrick Swayze and Jennifer Grey, um, uh, Dirty Dancing. Dirty Dancing, says Kim. Let's see if it's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Dirty Dancing. 
It's right. Oh, okay. 100 the high score, 65 is what you get for Jamie Johnson. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. Yeah, well played, Kim Baby and Johnny Castle. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Oh, uh, now, John, welcome back to Pointless. Thanks Good. for having me. Uh, I love the way you talk listen. to me. You're just like, hey, John, welcome hey, back listen, to Pointless. Hey, listen, I love the way you call me Al. I like that. Al. Now, John, well, uh, you've, uh, you, you've been in China. Ah, OK, we've got to go to China. It was yeah, what unreal. were you doing in China? The show's over there, like, basically, because they always play our music. The songs that we write and produce ourselves, they play them on MTV and all the different TV shows. And they love songs with meanings, deep meanings, because they translate them into Chinese. And we write real deep, meaningful songs. I know to the English public that might come as a shock, because uh, some of you are still stuck back seven years ago we were on the other TV shows. We don't even mention that show. Anyway, we're on the point just now. <laughs> But anyway, it's, what, it's going what. great. They're going to have us back to do more TV shows. And we're going to do, like, these shows that are watched by, like, 90 million people. That's, like, back in the 60s, people were watching. Like, when you're on TV, people are watching... He's that... still on TV. He right still there. is. But I mean, like, way, way back when nobody had Twitter, no one had social media. I'm not that old. Everyone was watching. <laughs> OK, he's not that old. But he hasn't... Look, he's totally fresh. You're so fresh. Uh, John. <laughs> yes. Would you like this board's all yours? Do you want to go through it and, and, yeah, and have Yeah, there's some very obvious ones. OK, we'll go but through them all and then say which one them? you want to be your answer. OK, um, everyone knows Titanic, cos everyone loves Leonardo DiCaprio. Uh, I'm going to go for Renee and Colin Firth, Bridget Jones' Diary. Bridget Jones' Diary, says John. Let's see if it's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. It's right. Oh. Now then, there we go. Oh. 45! 45 for Bridget Jones's diary. Very well done, indeed. That is a good answer. A lot of danger of Jeb uh, being in round two. I know. If it's, Guys, do you have on. a diary? Sorry? Honestly, OK, thank you so much, OK, for, like, picking the, the 2051 Cape Blanchett one, OK? I was going to go for that one. I was like, that was like, probably the most pointless one. Which one was it? Uh, I, don't I don't know. know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know which one it, I was talking about. It was the war one, was it? The war? No. I cannot believe all of this is happening in front of Aussie RD there. I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are great. We, I met Pele. I met Pele. Pele's an all-time great soccer. This is it. This is I met this... David Beckham. David Beckham was cool. We were clubbing with Wayne Rooney. Oh, yeah. I'm out of here. We know what <laughs> No, honestly, guys. <laughs> Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Oh, dear. We're only, we're only halfway through the first round. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sam, it was a woman's name. The name of the film is Carol. Damn it. And it would have been the most pointless. You uh, Yes, yeah, so the best answer on the board. Six points for that. Uh, Audrey Hepburn and George Peppard. Yeah, but it's the Tiffany's. It's at Tiffany's. 25 points for that. Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio. It was Titanic. Uh, big scorer, though, 85 points, so you were right to go for Bridget Jones' Diary. And Dev Patel and Frida Pinto. Slumdog, Slumdog Millionaire. Slumdog Millionaire. Would have wow. scored you 15. Very well done if you said that at home. Very well done if you said Carol. Thank you very much indeed. OK, well, halfway through the round, let's take a look at those scores. 40, the best score of that pass. Well done, Guillaume. Uh, 40 for you. Puts you, I think, pretty comfortably at the head of the table. And 45. Jedward, look at that, 45. Yeah, it's, it's been a while. The Titanic one was a very obvious one that you probably... Well, there we are, 45, not bad, 65 is where we find so. Kim and Jimmy, and then 100, Sam and Nancy. Right, Nancy, a nice low score from you. We'll keep you in the games, and good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> OK, let's put seven more pairs of actors up on the board, and here they are. We have got Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal, 2005, Natalie Wood and Richard Boehmer, 1961, Julia Roberts and Richard Gere, 1990, Burt Lancaster and Deborah Carr, 1953, Vivian Lee and Clark Gable, 1939, Andy McDowell and Hugh Grant, 1994, and Gwyneth Paltrow and Joseph Fiennes, 1998. I'll read those again. Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal, 2005, Natalie Wood and Richard Boehmer, 1961, Julia Roberts and Richard Gere, 1990, Burt Lancaster and Deborah Carr, 1953, Vivian Lee and Clark Gable, 1939, Andy McDowell and Hugh Grant, 1994, and Gwyneth Paltrow and Joseph Fiennes, 1998. Edward. Hi. Um, Everything John said kind of goes for me, so we can get oh, on with this game. Oh, let's get on with it. Uh, right, Edward. Have to go uh, with it. <laughs> uh, Edward. I'm Edward. I get the full name of Jedward. He only gets a J, but it's all good. We worked so, it out. Yeah, I did wonder about that. Yes. Guys, just everyone knows, we can be very, very intellectual. I actually write contracts at home. We write songs and produce, we do very, very grown up things. You write we book contracts. our own concerts, do shows, and I'm here today giving him my all for all of you. We're all here to have some fun. You're I know you're a soccer player. I appreciate everything around. you do. I really respect it. You look very great. Jimmy Osmond, I have so much respect for everyone here. Oh, I'm just having fun. I'm okay. in a red suit. I'm wearing a sparkly outfit. So, Edward. It's all good. Edward, everything he says goes for you as well. You're on 45. 
The high scores at the moment are Nancy and Sam. So 54 or less keeps you in the game. Round two. OK. Julia Robert. Um... OK, I'm going to go okay. for Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal. Broke back Mountain. Broke back Mountain, says Edward. Here is your red line. If you can get below that red line with Broke back Mountain, you are into round two. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Broke back Mountain. It's right. Look at that, you're in round two. History is made. 42 is what you score, 87 is your total. Very well done indeed. And Jedward are in round two. Yeah. I will inform the BBC schedulers, get them to put casualty back. <laughs> uh, well played. It won the MTV Award for Best Screen Kiss as well. Thank you very much, Richard. Uh, now, Jimmy. Yes, sir. Jimmy, you are in your 50th year in show business. Who's counting? No <laughs> way. <laughs> That's just amazing. I started when I was three on the yeah. Andy Williams show and haven't stopped, you know? It's been wow. wild. It's been a wild ride. And uh, what are you up to these days, Jimmy? What, what, what keeps you busy now? I'm still touring. I own a theater, which used to be Andy Williams Theater. And before he passed away, he asked me to keep his music and legacy alive. So I produce shows there, and I actually tour. Uh, I'm touring a show called Moon River and Me, which uh, celebrates Moon. not only our music, but Andy's music that we used to sing. You know, it's kind of part of our... We're kind of an extension of his legacy. So it's great fun to bring all the footage and all the music back. To say, you know, he touched so many people's lives. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Jimmy, you're on 65. Our high scores at the moment are Nancy and Sam on 100, so 34 or less keeps you in the game. OK, I'm rubbish at this, sorry. <laughs> but I think the one that's obvious is Julia Roberts and Richard Gere in, in uh, Pretty Woman is what I'd, I'd pick. OK, you're going to go for Pretty Woman. Now, let's see. Here is your red line. If you get below that with Pretty Woman, you're through to the next round. How many people said it? Ooh, look at that, 73. There's a lifeline for Nancy and Sam there. 138 is your total. Yeah, good answer, though. Uh, much better than 100. Uh, pretty well. Mm. Mm. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you, Ozzy. A mm. very warm welcome to Pointless. Thank Great you. to have you here. A World Cup winner, Ozzy, playing for Argentina. Now, your, your career at Argentina, you just... Um, did you and Maradona cross over at all? Yes, uh, we play seven years together. Um, I started playing with Diego, and I was a superstar. He was a little boy. Yeah. Uh, he was incredible uh, in the way that he was improving all the time. So I would say I, I teach him one or two things, and after that, uh, he, he improved too much, and he became the player that he was. At yeah, the... he learned it all yeah. at your knee. Exactly. Not only um, from me. Yeah. No, um, Ozzy, tell me about the Ozzy Ardila. There's, the, there's, the, there's the a soccer school, isn't there? There's a football yeah, a soccer school. Soccer school, you... yes, in the south of uh, London. He's a friend of mine, a very young guy that he ran the school and he's doing a tremendous, tremendous job. So uh, I'm very happy to, to put my name in, into it. OK. Now, Ozzy, you are, you are as good as through. 97 or less keeps you in the game. Yeah. 97 or less. So that's some indication of what you need to score. I go for Vivian Lake and Clara Gable, Gone with the Wind. Gone with the Wind, says Ozzy. Here is That's your... That's my, my age, probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, here is your red lines, nice and high. If you can get below that with Gone with the Wind, you are through to round two. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Gone with the Wind. It's right, and you are through. Very well done. 50. <laughs> Doing your time up to 90. Very well played, Ozzy. Safe and sound. Yeah, it was the first ever colour film to win Best Picture Oscar. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Nancy. Yes. A very, sir. very warm welcome to Pointless. <gasps> Lovely to have you here. Now, um, you made a great name for yourself as yes. a chef. Yes. And uh, Inak Inak, that was your your, yes. your restaurant. Means delicious, delicious. Mm. But you then you crossed over into television. How yes. did that happen? When did, when when and how? Uh, there's two men came and had dinner. And they say, that woman is strange. <laughs> I don't know where she comes from. Why don't we try her on television? That's where I turn up. And you never look back? Never. <gasps> you never look back on anything, good or bad thing in your life. Never look back. Go forward. Quite right. Now, Nancy, you are not the high scorers. You're on 100. 138 is where Jimmy and Kim are. If you can score 37 or less, you and Sam will go through to the next round. Do you feel like talking us through this board? I only know one. That's all I know. I'm going for Burt Lancaster. And what film is that? I've forgotten. What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> On the beach! On my leg! What do you think? 
We can't do it with Okay, me. on the beach. You're going for on the beach. Don't laugh. You here can't help is, it. Here is your red line. If you can get yeah. below that red line with on the beach, you're yeah. into the next Thank round. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's see what happens. On the beach. Come on, baby. No, oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. It's oh, a warm I'm day. sorry. <laughs> I'm afraid that scores 100 points. Takes your total up to 200. Okay. Uh, I am sorry. It's from here to eternity. Oh, come That's off this. it. Have we got to go? And would have scored you 15 points. Um, now, Andy McDowell and Hugh Grant would have seen you through, funnily enough. Four weddings and a few. Yeah, 36 oh, points oh, for yeah. that. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow and Joseph Fiennes. Shakespeare, Shakespeare in Love. Love. That would have got 17. And Natalie Wood and Richard Bamer is West Side Story. Yes. And it's the best oh, answer oh, on the board. Four right. points. Very well done if you yes said that. Now. She's saying yes now, like, yes, I know that. <laughs> and it was the lowest one. <laughs> well, listen, at the end of our first round, <laughs> I'm afraid the pair we've got to send home. This is not fair. <laughs> and Nancy. Nancy and Sam. Oh, it's, it's been lovely having you here. It's OK. Not good. We're going to miss fun. you. No, you're not. Yeah, we are. <laughs> no, seriously. There's always hope. We've been in your position twice. Yeah, and okay. we're still here, OK? Yeah. You'll be back, Nancy. You'll be back, Sam. Right. Always have hope, OK? Yeah, okay. Right. Have hope. He's right. Everything he said goes I'm for me. I'm here to meet you two old men. Uh, Nancy and Sam, you're wonderful. Please come and play again. Nancy and Sam, superb. <laughs> But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. And look at that, we're suddenly down to three pairs. Jedward, you're still in. I know, we're in the we Olympics. We might get to make a remix. First, With second, third. <laughs> Graham, congratulations, our lowest scorer in that round, so very well done. Um, very best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two this evening is words. It's a words round. Can you all decide in your pairs? Who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question is. Here it comes. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many words ending in AP as they could. Words ending in AP, Richard. Yeah, we're looking for any word in the English dictionary, please, that ends AP, any word in the British and world section of uh, OxfordDictionaries.com that ends AP. As always, no proper nouns, no hyphenated words. Very best of luck. Um, Ozzy. Oh. Words ending AP, and a nice obscure word. So I have to say one or...? Any, yes, any word Only you one. can think of, just oh. one. Yeah. Only one. Oh. But think of, make a nice, think of a nice one that you think the fewest of our 100 people would have thought of. Map. 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 Says Ozzy. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for map. Fifty-nine. Fifty-nine for map. Map, as in a map. Or two map. <laughs> or two map. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, Jimmy. How about um, trap? Trap, says Jimmy. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people went for trap. It's right. Fifty-nine is our only score at this point. Fifty-two for trap. Trap, like a trap or two trap. Thank you very much, Richard. <laughs> uh, John, a word ending AP. So it has to end AP. It can't be like a solid E at the end? No. OK, all right. <laughs> so I, I had a really good what? one there, but then I wasn't sure if there's an E at the end, so I'm just like, mm, it's better than B. So I'm just going to go for slap. <laughs> slap, says John. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for slap. It's right. <laughs> Well, 59 was our high school, then 52. Dan, you're going to 36, John. Yeah. I tell you what, the head to head maybe beckons. Uh, yes, yeah, slap uh, can mean to strike, say, or make up. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores. 36, the best score of the pass, Jedward. Lord preserve what? us. You are the low scorers. What? Halfway through the round. Then we go up to 52, where we find Jimmy and Kim. Then up to 59, where we find Graham and Ossie. So, Graham, we need a nice low score from you. Uh, good luck with that. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? OK, now, <laughs> Edward, remember, we're looking for words ending with the letters AP. You're on 36. Listen, if you can score 22 or less, you're definitely in the next round. OK. I'm going to go for rap, as in food, but not the rap like, yo, what's up? Just the okay, rap like, mm, chicken. Mm, chicken rap. Chicken rap. 
Or no, veggie wrap for all the vegetarians. Oh, yes. God, I'm glad we spelled that out. Good. OK, there we are. Um, there's your red line. If you can get below that with wrap. With veggie wrap. You are through to the next <laughs> round. Let's see how many of our 100 people went for wrap. <clears throat> it's right. Look at that, you're from 18. You are in the head to head round, Jen. You're 54. Is your total. Yeah, there you go. Rap. To rap. rap or a rap. No, the rap, like W O A P. Oh, no, I know. Yeah, yeah. That meant rap. I, was, I had a silent W on mine. Nancy's going to make us food after this. She's like cooking it up right now at backstage. It's thanks to Nancy who actually got that answer because she was talking about cooking us food. So some subliminal message went into his head and he got rap. Well, nice. cer certainly something's going on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that Guys, is I feel very like a genius nice. right now. I feel like I'm a who wants to be a millionaire. I'm going to win all that money for the charity. Kim. Yes. Now then, Kim. Um, uh -huh. The high scorers at the moment are uh, Guillaume and Ozzy on 59. So ideally, you'd score six or less. Oh. With your answer. Um, lap. lap. Sit on my lap. Lap, says Kim. Yes. Here is Not your... a lap dance, but sit on my lap. Santa Claus, sit on my lap. That's a sort of Nancy like comment. <laughs> um, <laughs> Now, Kim, there is your red line coming in there quite low. Oh, but let's see how far down we get with lap. Oh. How many of our 100 people said lap? It's right. Oh. 55 for lap, taking your total up to 107. All we need now is a professional journalist to be on the show. That's all we need on our final podium. Here's hoping. Uh, now, Guillaume, what would you like to go for? You're on 59. 47 or less gets you through. All right, I'll go for a football term, uh, which is close to that one, overlap. Overlap, oh, says Willem. Let's that's see good. how many of our 100 people said overlap. Here is your red line. Get below this red line, you are home and dry. Let's see how many of our 100 people said overlap. It's right. And you are through. Very, very well done indeed. Overlap. Look at that. Downy. Go. One. Taking your total up to 60. Very good indeed. Oh, thank you so much, Guy. It's, it's almost like a regular episode of Pointless there. Just, yeah. just briefly. Thank you for bringing us back to that. Uh, there's lots and lots of Pointless answers here. Have you got a good... Uh... Uh, dewlap. Dewlap? Yeah. Like the people who make the paint. <laughs> dewlap. Two points. Oh, no. Two points. Oh, no. Thunderclap was probably better, maybe. Thunderclap? Yeah. Thunderclap would have scored you one point. Oh, very annoying. Now, there's some good pointless answers, though. Take a look at these. Lots of words that people could have got here. Death trap, pointless answer. Nightcap. Nightcap. Remap, rather than map, would have been uh, would have been a pointless answer. Would have added money to that jackpot. Skullcap. Scrappy. Why did I think of a skullcap? Skullcap, yeah. stopgap. Stopgap. Toecap. Unwrap oh, would have yeah. been a pointless yeah. answer. So, wrap uh, scored 18. Unwrap. Yeah, Wiretap, you also could have had docu soap. That's a nice one. Uh, dung heap, dust heap, hand clap, honey trap, mad cap, out leap, snow cap, all of those Marsh are pointless answers. Let's take a look at the top three, the ones that most of our 100 people said. And they were lap 55, map 59, <laughs> and, and tap 59 as well. Ooh. Top answers. There we are. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. So we are at the end of our second round. The pair we have to say goodbye to with our high score of 107. Aww. Kim and Jimmy, I'm afraid it's you. Hey, this has been a blast. We had a great time. Oh, it's been Thank lovely you. having you here. Can I like, can I like, uh, who do you want? Do you want to replace with anyone, Edward? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, take, I'll take Jimmy. I sacrifice myself. I'm gone. I'm, I am, I am hearing yes, we can do that. <laughs> I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna... <laughs> uh, Kim and Jimmy, it's been lovely having you. Jimmy, I know you're going to sing us out there. I'm really looking forward to that. Like... But uh, thank you so much for playing Kim and Jimmy, thank everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For John and Edward, Ozzy and Gwilym, it's now time for our head to head. Well, congratulations, John and Edward, Ozzy and Gwilym. Uh, you're now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £2,500. There we are. But this is where we decide who gets to play for that jackpot, and we do it by making you go head-to-head. -head. But the big difference is you're now allowed to confer. First pair to win two questions will be playing for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. Let's play the head-to-head! -head. Here comes your first question, and it concerns... 
Funny Americans. Funny Americans, Richard. I'll show you five pictures now of Americans associated with the world of comedy. Can you name the most obscure of these, please? OK, let's reveal our five funny Americans, and here they come. We have got... A. B. C. D. And E. There we are. Now, John and Edward, you will go first. Well, OK, we have... We've, we've met, met. We've met her. OK, don't say the names. OK, okay we're going to go for that babe. See her? Number D, Tina Fey. Tina Fey. Say John and Edward for D, Tina Fey. Now then, Ozzy and Guillaume. Well, I kind of recognise one, E. Uh, and I, I may, may not say properly, but Ellen DeGeneres. Is that the one you want to go for? Yes. Ellen DeGeneres, E. So we have Tina Fey and we have Ellen DeGeneres. Now, Tina Fey say Jedward for D. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Tina Fey. It's right. Ten for Tina Fey. Ozzy and Graham, meanwhile, have gone for Ellen DeGeneres for E. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Ellen DeGeneres. It's right. 47. Which means, well done, Jedward. After only one question, you are up 1 0. The march of Jedward continues. Yes, sure. Tina Fey there. She's the star of the greatest sitcom of all time, I think, 30 Rock. A is uh, Melissa McCarthy, would have scored you 13 points. B, star of Seinfeld and now Veep, Julia Louis Dreyfus. Best answer on the board, two points. Well done if you said that. And Joan Rivers is the highest scorer. Joan Rivers would have scored you 55. Um, thank you, Richard. Here is your second question. Ozzy and Gwilym, you get to answer it first, but you have to win this one to stay in the game, so very best of luck. Our uh, second question is all about confused fruit. Confused <laughs> fruit. Yeah, we're simply going to show you five descriptions of different types of fruit which are often confused, often used as vegetables. But they're oh. really fruit. But we're going to we'll describe them, but what are these fruit? Ah, so what are these fruit? Let's reveal our five confused fruit. A purple egg-shaped fruit known as eggplant in America. A winter fruit shaped like a pear with a hard outer skin and a variety called the wolfham. A long green-skinned fruit. One of its varieties is called burplus. A plant of the mallow family with long ridged seed pods, often called ladies' fingers. And a glossy red pulpy edible fruit, many of which are thrown at a Spanish festival in Buñol. I'll read those all one last time. A purple egg-shaped fruit known as eggplant in America. A winter fruit shaped like a pear with a hard outer skin and a variety called the wolfham. A long green skinned fruit, one of its varieties is called burplus. A plant of the mallow family with long ridged seed pods, often called ladies' fingers. And a glossy red pulpy edible fruit, many of which are thrown at a Spanish festival in Buñol. There we are. Now then, Ozzy and Guillaume, it's over to you. We will go for the only one we know, uh, the Spanish one, tomato. The tomato. The tomato at the bottom there. Now then, John and Edward, it's over to you. Yeah, no, I don't know it. Just go for it. Can we just think about it? Uh, the first one, a courgette, a courgette. A courgette, a courgette. OK. We, we... For eggplant, courgette, say Jedward. So we have a tomato, Am courgette. Right, Ozzy Maybe and Guillaume went oh, God, just for give me the tomato. No. Let's just see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said tomato. It's right. 75 for tomato. John and Edward, meanwhile, have gone for courgette for the eggplant. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said courgette. No, oh. not a courgette, I'm afraid. A not a courgette. Very well done, Ozzy and Guillaume, after two well, questions. It's one all. Uh, yeah, it's not a courgette, it's an aubergine, was the answer you're looking for. Oh, something like that. Word, it, was, it, was a, it was something, something very French. like that. Yeah, 72 points if you said aubergine. The best answer is the winter fruit. In fact, it's a pointless answer. Very well done if you said butternut squash. Oh. Do you know that? Who's getting that? Very well played if you got it. Uh, the long-skinned fruit is a cucumber. 38 points. Uh, and the plant of the mallow family? Okra. Okra, yep. And that would have scored you 43. 
Thank you very much indeed. OK, so here's your third question. This is the decider. Whoever wins this goes through to the final and plays for that jackpot. Best of luck to both pairs. Our third question is all about Spice Girls. You, Richard? Yeah, we're simply going to show you five clues now to facts about the Spice Girls. Uh, whoever gives us the most obscure answer is going through to play for that jackpot. So very, very best of luck. Thank you very much indeed. OK, let's reveal our five clues and here they come. We have got... What the B stands for in the name of the band member known as Mel B, the name of the musical based on their songs that first opened in London in 2012, used as a term of female empowerment, the two-word phrase which they popularised, the year they won the Best British Single at the Brit Awards and the title of their 2007 song, which was also the official Children in Need single that year. I'll read those again. What the B stands for in the name of the band member known as Mel B, the name of the musical based on their songs that first opened in London in 2012, used as a term of female empowerment, the two-word phrase which they popularised, the year they won the Best British Single at the Brit Awards and the title of their 2007 song, which was also the official Children in Need single that year. Now, Jedward, you will go first. Are you going to go for a job? I hope it's the right answer, OK. Um, uses the term of female empowerment, the two-word phrase which they popularise. Girl power! <laughs> I've known that a girl. I hope it's okay, girl power. Girl I power. hope so. Jed was saying girl power. Now, Ozzy and Guillaume, it's over to you. Do you want to talk us through that board? I cannot use the same one. We cannot use the same one. You can't use the same one, right. sadly. So the next one will have to be a guess at uh, the single. Uh, let's say 2003. Just to say something. 2003 for Best British Single. 2003. So we have Girl Power versus 2003. Jedward have gone for Girl Power. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it. It's right. 61 for Girl yes. Power. Ozzy and Graham, meanwhile, have gone for 2003 for the year they won Best British Single. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said 2003. Bad luck, which means, Jedward, after three questions, you are through to the final. We won. Two, one. Let's... Let's put in the rest of this board, shall we? Yeah. Uh, the B stands for Brown, Melanie Brown. We'll score 29 points. The name of the musical, written by Jennifer Saunders, it was Viva Forever. Would have scored you 10. The year they won the best single was actually 1997. They won it for Wannabe, their first single. Close. Uh, nine points for that. And the title of the 2007 song was Headlines. And that would have scored you one point. Very well done if you said that. Thank you very much indeed, Richard. Uh, so at the end of our head-to-head -head round, we have to say goodbye to Ozzy and Guillem. I am so sorry that we didn't get you into the final. But... Oh, uh, it's been great having you on. Thank you Thank so you. much. Please come and play again. Uh, Thank you very much. Ozzy and Guillem, wonderful to have you here. Thank you so much. But for Jedward, it is now time for our pointless final. Congratulations, Jedward. You have fought off all the competition and you have won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot for your charities. And at the end of today's show, the jackpot is standing at £2,500. Well... Very, very well done indeed. What a turn up that is. You've come through to the final. This I is actually a... feel so, um, re it's so it's rewarding. It's good being here to spread awareness for the charity, and our charity is Princess Diana uh, anti bullying program, and that's the whole thing. And live on television, everyone get behind it, and we're great. And they do like a lot of work in schools, like anti bullying ambassadors, and it all makes the. And whole all the kids, thing. we're going through stuff like that, and we love just being part of that and being involved. Yeah, because like we're survivors as well. Like all the stuff people have said about us, and we're still here after We're seven still years. here rocking sequins, chops. Spiky hair, still doing it. Yeah, you gotta okay. be yourself. You gotta That's, be yourself. See, that is fantastic. Well done, you. That's a great charity, isn't it? Very well done. <laughs> now, as always, you get to choose your category in this last round. Four things on the board. Let's see what today's selection looks like. Nora Ephron films, Latin American singers, dogs, the year 1980. OK. <laughs> we have, like, six dogs at home. Shout out. We look after all our dogs. Our dogs, some of them have, like, 10 and 20,000 We literally have a Twitter. zoo. We live in an estate. I'm surprised the neighbours haven't, like, reported us or anything, but they're all really, really good dogs. Yeah. OK, I think it's going to be dogs, Richard. <laughs> OK. 
OK, good luck, gents. Uh, very best of luck, a great charity. We're looking for any distinct named breed that took part in Crufts 2016 in any of the following categories, please. The toy breeds, the hound breeds, or the working breed. So any distinct named breed that was in competition in 2016 at Crufts in any of those three categories, please. Very best of luck. OK, now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that jackpot for your brilliant charity is for just one of those answers to be pointless. OK, let's put 60 seconds up on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. All right, let's get this thing going. 59, 8, 7. Wait, fine, we have time. Okay. Have time. So, a toy breed, they're kind of like all kind of Paris Hilton dogs. Yeah, I think everyone just wants a chihuahua. We yeah, they're, too, they're yeah. too, like, technical now. We don't really know that kind yeah, of breed. Yeah, we're going breed, they're always going, oh, like, howling. Like, I, I just think of wolves. So, I know working breeds because our granddad and everyone had their, you know, the dog, the typical yeah. dogs you always have. A ger is it a German Shepherd or an German Alsatian? Shepherd, There's two different names. Alsatian, Balinrog, Doberman. All them beagle out hunting, cha cha cha. Uh, Dalmatian sometimes might have to no, work. That's not working. I don't, but it's working in film. You know, one hundred one Dalmatians. But like, guys, they were working. They were working. They were every paid. dog. Could be they were a working them. breed. Oh no, it's a judge at Crufts. Crufts. Yeah, but they would have been there. They would have been there. Let's forget about the Crufts in two thousand sixteen. There obviously were there. Come on, a Dalmatian. It's Dalmatian. Dalmatian. Ten seconds left. How do you pronounce Dalmatian? Focus, just ten, ten seconds left. Look, I'll, I'll, really I'll, left. Do you have this? You have some questions right after. So what are you going for? OK, that is your minute up. Jedward, I now need your three answers. A miniature pug. A miniature pug. A chihuahua. A chihuahua. And they're for the toy breeds. Yeah. And then I'm going for working breeds. I'm going for Doverman. OK, of those three, which, which do you think is your best shot at a pointless answer? Which do you think is the most obscure? Um, we have a Chinese crested, and no one has that dog, so we should have gone for that answer, John, because no one really knows that dog. Yeah, sadly, that's not one of your three answers. I have to protect... Of the three answers you've given... Oh. Which do you think is your best shot at a point? It's just we put them in the right which order. Which one's the best one? Doberman. OK, Doberman will put last. Pointless. Least likely to be pointless? Um, the least likely is Chihuahua. OK, Chihuahua, and then Mini Pug in the middle. OK, well, let's put those answers up on the board in that order, then, and here they are. We have got Chihuahua, Miniature Pug, Doberman. Well, very, very best of luck. If you win that jackpot, it goes straight to your charity. So uh, wouldn't that be a nice end to this yeah, fabulous yes. show? OK, well, best of luck. Your first answer was Chihuahua. In this case, we were looking for uh, toy breeds judged at Crufts in 2016. Only one of these has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. So for £2,500, let's see how many people said Chihuahua. It's right. All that has to be now is pointless, and you can go away with that jackpot for your charity. Down Chihuahua goes through. all 38. 38 for Chihuahua. Not a pointless answer, which means we move on to your next answer. So what's pointless? Like, literally zero? Literally, literally <laughs> zero. well down there. In I this should have gone for the most obscure make ever in breed. Yeah, that was the... that's the... <laughs> that's the game. OK. OK, but still, you've got two well, more answers on the board. People Let's find out. Men, Let's yeah. find out. Miniature Pug. Again, we were looking for toy breeds from Crufts 2016. Let's find out. For £2,500, how many people named Miniature Pug as one of those breeds? No. Bad luck. I don't Not like spending money on all your charities. They all deserve a bit of money for the charity. Well, listen, you only have one more shot at today's jackpot. Let's find out what's going to happen with uh, Doberman. In this case, you've gone for working breeds, judged at Crufts in 2016. If nobody said it, you will win £2,500 for your charity. Let's find out how many people said Doberman. It's right. Oh. Well, now, your first answer, Chihuahua, went down to 38. Your second answer, Miniature Pug, was incorrect. Oh. Doberman, no passes, 38. Go down and go through the teens. It's a single pick. Still going down, still going down. Three! Oh. Not bad. That's a good answer. Sadly, not a pointless answer, which means you don't win today's jackpot of uh, £2,500. However, as today's show is a celebrity special, we're going to donate £500 to each celebrity pair to give to Perfect. their respective charities. So there you are. It's been fabulous having you on. And you Great get time. to take home a pointless trophy. So there we you are. We get a trophy. Well yeah. Guys. Yeah. Guys, guys, guys. We were on the Eurovision. We didn't win the Eurovision. We didn't win that other talent show. But, like, come on, we kind of won the show. So, like... You, you have absolutely won, won the show. You won it. You, just, you won it fair and square. Very well played. Now, I think you were going to change your answer right at the last minute to one of the types of dogs that you have. Is that right? A Chinese crested. Chinese crested would have been a pointless answer. Fiji. 
Yes, You're Pete. the best. That's my dog's name. Ah. Uh, let's go through the pointless answers. We'll start with toy breeds. Uh, Affen Pincher is a pointless answer. Italian Greyhound, beautiful dogs. Australian Silky Terrier, King Charles Spaniel is a pointless answer. Very well done if you said that at home. Uh, Cavalier, King Charles Spaniel, also a pointless answer. Uh, Japanese Chin, Lao Chen, a Miniature Pincher, all of those were pointless answers. Let's take a look now at the Hound breeds. All of these pointless answers. Basenji, the Finnish Spitz, I'd like a Finnish Spitz, they're beautiful dogs. Uh, Ibethan Hound, the Faro Hound. Uh, you also could have had the Norwegian Elk Hound, the Otter Hound, the Rhodesian Ridgeback, all of those pointless answers as well. Now let's take a look at the working breeds. Uh, the Bernese Mountain Dog, Giant Schnauzer, Newfoundland, uh, Rottweiler. Rottweiler is a pointless answer, amazingly. Uh, you also could have had Bull Mastiff, you could have had German Pincher, Greenland Dog. Uh, so very, very well done if you've got any of those at home. Uh, terrific uh, answers there in that final round. Good category for you. And I'm really, really sorry about Chinese Crested. That would have been such a lovely answer for Fiji and for the charity. But everyone shared in the money. Edit answer the question. Yeah. Are you going to have us back? Because we'll come back. We'll be back for a sequel. We're like James Bond. Let me just We'll come back check. every year and make a great movie. Can we be like James Bond? we just, like, come back every year. Yeah. I'll Let's come say, back dressed as James yes. Bond. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Uh, it's been lovely having you on. Uh, John and Edward, thank you so much for playing. Jedward. Yeah.